Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live NinjaTrader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Jim Cagnino with Ninja Trader. Today is August 14th. Time is flying by. Middle of summer is here amongst us right now. Today, we're going to focus on the trading ladder, on the web based version of the uh, Ninja Trader platform. There's three different options you have you have the PC based downloadable Ninja Trader trading platform, you have the web based trading platform, which we're going to focus on today. You could access that from any web browser, and you have a mobile app as well. So there's three different ways to actually uh, participate with NinjaTrader uh, through three different trading platforms. Um, so this is my layout for the web-based. And again, if, as we go through the process, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat. Joining me uh, in the chat um, is the fabulous Ed Jerkin. Ed uh, could answer any kind of question Ninja-related, so feel free uh, to go ahead and uh, pop in any questions you might have into the chat. And the chat can be found at ninjatrader.com forward slash events. So you use, type in the word events after ninjatrader.com and that's where you get it. All right, so here's my layout. Remember, this is all modules, right? This is a module-based, web-based platform. On the left is the trading ladder or the dome, depth of market, it's called. Where This is what we're going to focus on today on the left-hand side. Um, my other modules include... Um, a tick stream, which is like time and sales right here. We have my quotes with a whole bunch of sub tabs on my quote boards. We have charts on the right. And then in the middle, we have a thing called positions. This shows me my positions. And at the bottom, we have orders. That shows me my orders that I've done for today. So this is how my, my desktops uh, is organized. But again, we're going to focus on this uh, trading ladder uh, right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it open so we can see it a little bit better. And you could do that. Um, uh, by cl clicking on these uh, double arrows to the upper right on the module, it says full size. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open this up in full size. Now, to make it look more like we it would ordinarily look on a trading platform, I'm also going to minimize my window a little bit here, so we can see just the actual trading ladder. We're not, yeah, uh, we're not, uh, we don't have other things uh, popping around. Uh, on us now. Sometimes when you when you adjust the width and stuff like that, some some of the controls go away. And sometimes, uh, so make sure that when you have it all the way open, you know, hey, where are my controls? Here's my con my settings tab on the on the right hand side here on the screen. And by clicking on that, it will go ahead and actually uh, open up a dialog box. So the trick sometimes is when you're kind of minimizing a window for presentation purposes, anyway. How much do you have to open it to actually see the gear? And this is about as small as I could get it. Let's see if I can get it a little bit, tiny bit smaller. Okay, so we're going to focus on this trading ladder right here, um, the way it is. Now, the uh, center is the price ladder, right? This is trading ladders are called depth of market. Sometimes they're called Nasdaq level two views. They're called you hear the word domes all the time. Trading ladders, and it's a ladder because the prices are in the middle. And each rung of the ladder, each step up or each step down, represent the smallest price increment that this particular market or any particular market you're looking at could go. That's the smallest tick size, as we call it. And right now, you can see this is an E-mini S&P. Uh, this is an E-mini S&P stock index futures market that we're looking at. How do I know that? Well, in the upper left-hand corner, it, I, it says it. ES, September 2023 contract. That's the ticker symbol for this particular market. So it's traded in quarter points, right? Each uh, each price increment is 0.25, which is a uh, which is a quarter point, and the full uh, a full point is four 
uh, four ticks, right? So four quarters equals a point. So for instance, if you go to uh, 44.98 to 44.99 in price, that would be a full point broken up into those increments. On the left-hand side, you'll see a column that says bid. And on the right-hand side, you'll see a column that says ask. Some people would refer to this as offer also. Ask and offer are the same thing. And each column has a bunch of data. Now let's take a look at the data on the bid side. And I can scroll up or down with my mouse wheel in the center to move, uh, to navigate the trading ladder up and down to see various prices. Um, so in the bid column here, you see a bunch of green histogram bars with a bunch of numbers in them. And each one of those numbers represents limit orders that have been sent to the exchange for execution. And remember the definition of limit order is, hey, I would like to either buy or sell something at this, at this limit, with a limit order. And I wanna specify the exact price that I would like to do it at. And so in that, in that particular case, it's, you, would, you, would, you would receive a fill at your price or better is the definition. Typically, this market is very liquid, so you'd get, you wouldn't get it or better usually, you'd get your price, but you can't get worse than your price, right? You can't buy it at a higher price than you wanted to. So that's the definition of limiter. That's what you see here on the left-hand side. You see all these bids and offers uh, in the order book. It's called the order book at the CME Group. It's literally electronic uh, matching engine that they have there through their Globex trading platform. And you can see all of these numbers here, Not, and they're moving, right? So people are adding to... Uh, the bids, they're uh, cancel and replacing orders, they're canceling orders, they're changing prices, that's a cancel and replace. And on the right-hand side, the red side is the S column. These are limit orders to sell, right? This is, these, are, these, represent, these are contracts that are in the order book to sell at various prices along the trading ladder. And the difference between the highest uh, bid, the highest green, and the lowest ask is called the bid ask spread. And you can see there's a difference between the two, right? It's one tick, Right, the bid is one tick smaller uh, than the ask in this particular case, which is telling us this is a very tight marketplace. Right, a lot of volume, very tight, very liquid, which is a good thing when you're trading any market. All right, so that's kind of the middle part here. That's what we're seeing uh, right here at the top. There's some quick click buttons here. There's buy if you want to do a market order. You, I don't want to do a limit order. I want to do a market order. I just want to click this buy button here. It will go ahead and buy a contract for you at the market. Alternatively, on the right side here in the green side, it's a sell button, right? It could sell a contract in the market. And remember, in futures trading, we could easily go short instead of long. In other words, sell, sell a market or sell a contract with the expectation that the price is going to, to get lower. We could buy it back at a lower price. Alternatively, and more conventionally, you could buy a contract thinking the market's going to appreciate in price and you could sell it back at a higher price. So that's the difference between those two. In the middle, there's this thing called exit and uh, uh, at market and clear. That's kind of uh, it, it's if when you want to clean out your, your your trading letter, you don't want to have any positions in this market. You don't want to have any working orders in this market. That's what you would click. On the upper left side, you'll see a thing that says quantity, a field that says quantity. I would set it one. You can change it to whatever you'd like. And these are presets that we already have here. You could change it to any number by typing in there. And I just we're going to keep it at one for now. Next to it is a, is a zero underneath the word position. And this is showing you what positions you have in this market. I haven't made a trade yet, so I don't have a position, right? And this is, of course, in US dollars. So that's what that upper left-hand uh, side means. So let's start and go ahead and just on this basic trading ladder, just click buy market. I'm just gonna, and don't follow home, don't follow along at home. I'm just making up random trade idea. We'll hit buy market and we'll see what happens here. So in the, uh, uh, we bought one. On the upper left now, it says position is green one, right? That's plus one. I'm long one. At, a, at my price is 44, uh, 97 and three quarters. Underneath it shows my real-time mark to market, which tells me, hey, Jim, if you get out at, at the current price, it's going against you right now. If you get out at the current price, then that's going to be your uh, your gross p &L. In other words, that's, that's, that's how, how much you're going to lose on the trade. It's red. It's going against me right now. Now, this information is kind of mirrored here in the trading ladder. You see my little triangle here right next to the price on the actual ladder itself. And it shows this is where I'm long. It's an arrow pointing upward. I'm long. It's green. It's on the bid side. And that's um, everything is good. Now, that yellow uh, bar that's going across the screen right now, it's just highlighting where the last traded price is. It's, this is happening very fast. You can see the bids and offers moving quickly. You can see that yellow bar jumping up and down really quickly. And this is just gives you a visual highlight of, um, of, of where it's at. 
The bottom you see go to last. If you click on that, it will center the actual uh, action as this goes down. And as I mentioned before, use your mouse button to scroll up or to scroll down to make any changes. On the lower left, we have this uh, day or good till cancel. We're going to leave it at, set a day for now. And then ATM we'll talk about, but I haven't set it off. That's automated trade, automated trade management that'll give me the ability to automate uh, a trade idea. So before we get into that, though, let's take a look at this gear here, right? So in the NinjaTrader web, uh, these modules have little gears here that enable you uh, to look at settings. So I'm going to highlight my mouse over it. You can say it says view settings. Okay, I'm going to click on that. And it'll give me some information that I could add. Uh, to my uh, to my uh, to my view, I could show histogram. I could show join bid ask. I could show pulling stacking, uh, stop type. And then we have a settings gear within the settings gear. It's like settings gear squared right there. But we'll start with that right now. And these are my mouse configurations, right? So my mouse configurations, um, you could you could you could select how the mouse works associated with the ladder. Um, the first option is left click uh, for a limit order. And for a stop order, you'd right click. The one I have checked is left click for a limit order, and then also left click for a stop. And I'll and I'll show you what what this how this is applied really easily. But this is my preference. It's just all one left left mouse. But again, if you want to make it left and right, you could do that as well. Show histogram bids and offers, which we're already doing. I could turn that off, uh, but I like to see the bids and offers in the histo uh, in a histogram format on the trading ladder in green and in. Red. Um, p l and ticks. No, I don't want to see my p l and ticks. I want to see my p l and dollars. Uh, show estimated p and I, I have that turned on, and that's that column uh, right behind here in red that shows you, hey, where are you, you know, if you get out at this price, how much money are you going to make or lose? Um, you could show chart indicators, which I have selected also. Uh, so, in particular, we're going to be able to see the high of the day and the low of the day, and then show histogram values. So those. Those are the numbers in the histogram themselves. If I want to change colors, I could do it here as well. I could change colors here as well. So that's kind of just kind of basic formatting types of stuff. If you don't want all of these columns, then you can start removing stuff. If you want all these columns, you could leave them the way they are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just strip everything down just to kind of show you what a stripped down version looks like. And I'm unchecking these buttons here and I'll hit save. Okay, so this is kind of you know, just a raw. This is what, you know, out of the box, what you see, right? Uh, bids on the left, uh, offers on the right, price in the middle. So, it's, you know, some people prefer that view and maybe they would like a really tight view on their screen in their module. They don't want to use a lot of real estate, which makes sense as well. I'm going to go ahead and add those back though. I'm going to click on that, uh, again, that, that gear in the upper right. And then I'm looking for the other gear. I'm looking for the other gear. And so again, I'm going to add, I'm going to show bid ask histogram. Let's click. Uh, I'm going to show estimated p &L. I'm going to show uh, chart indicators and I'll show histogram values. And I'm going to hit save. And there we have my original view back up on the screen. Any questions as we proceed, pop them in there. I'd be happy uh, to talk to you about them. Uh, I'm going to go back to the gear though, because there's other things we skipped over, right? We didn't talk about show histogram. We didn't talk about show uh, show joint bid, show uh, joint ask, uh, pulling and stacking, stop type. Uh, let's start with stop type. I'm going to go ahead and click on stop type and configure stop type. And I just word stop, right? And there's a drop down menu next to the word stop. You could, we could change this to different options, right? Uh, stop limit, a trailing stop, a trailing stop limit. And we'll get into a little of this once we start making some trades. But for now, I'm just going to keep it at stop. And this is what I have my default set on uh, all the time anyway. So I'm going to hit OK there. Let's go back to the gear. Now, the show bid, uh, join bid, and join ask is really important to me. So I'm going to select it. And it's going to pop up this join bid and join ask. It was real subtle, you know, not much of a difference on the look. So you got to know what you're looking for. But um, instead of by market, where I would uh, where I would typically receive, if I click on this and I want to uh, I want to launch a market order, I would typically receive the lowest offer, right? The lowest ask immediately, right? It looks for the best price. Join bid alternatively would go ahead and place an order is at the top of the green column, the highest bid would place that order, right? 
if for join bid. The opposite is true for join ask, right? Join ask. Now I'm still I'm still long one and I'm down 175. This is a real time sim account, folks. And again, that was just a random trade idea. Now, if I wanted to get out of this uh, position, I'm long one, so I'd have to sell one, and then I would become what's called flat. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit that join ask button. It sends a limit order. Now the ask has moved since I sent it, right? And you can see this order is sitting right here. It's not filled yet. It's at it's at this price, if uh, 94 and uh, and a quarter. And it's a limit order, right? So I got as close as I could at the time. The market moved down against me right away. So I didn't get a fill right away, but I'm leaving it there now as a limit order to try to get out. Now, again, the danger of joining the uh, join ask or join bid is this phenomenon happens, right? You don't get filled and it moves against you. The positive side of join, uh, join ask or join bid is you don't lose one tick uh, in the bid ask spread. So it's a trade off, of course. Um, but in any event, it's sitting there, it's working. It's a working order. It's working at the CME group. Now, if I wanted to change it, change my mind, I wanted to cancel and replace this order, I could just grab it with my mouse and just drag it up to a different price and let go of my mouse. And I just canceled and replaced that order. It's really easy. Grab it with your mouse, right? You click down on your left mouse button while your mouse is on the actual uh, order and drag it to a different price. Let go of the mouse and you've just canceled and replaced orders. And remember, canceling and replaced orders is you cancel the old one and you place the new one. And when you place a limit order, you go to the back of the line, right? Here's 111 contracts in front of me, right? So I'm at the back of the line, but I'm at a better price because I moved it down. So I'm, I'm actually closer to my chances of getting filled. And there we have it, we just got to fill. We're flat now and you can see position is zero. We don't have a position um, and uh, it's we could start over, we could do, whatever we wanted to. Now, um, alternatively, if I said, well, I think I, I want to I, I go long. I think this market's going to go up. So I want to place a limit order to buy a contract. I'm going to select my price you know, on a limit order. I can, I can do market order, but I want to select my price. I want to be picky. I want to wait for the market to come to me. Let's say I want to buy a contract at 94. Even I'm going to go over to the bid side and I'm going to click once. Oops, I clicked twice. I got a little bit too excited on my clicks, but I clicked twice. And so I ended up with two. You know what? That was a mistake. So I'm just going to X it out. It's gone. Let's try kicking once again. There we go. I replaced it. That little X here will cancel the order before it's filled. So that's pretty cool. So now I want to get long at 94 even. I'm going to wait for the market to come to me. And then um, we'll, uh, uh, we'll manage the trade from there. Now, one thing I could do, right? Oh, there we go. We're long one at 44.94 even, right? So now I got to put a protective stop in, right? Remember, I'm left click, left click. I set my mouse action to left click, left click. So, but a, a protective stop would be a sell stop, right? You know, for as an example, hey, if the market gets below, I don't know, we're just going to pick uh, this particular number here, this um, a 40, 4490. I'm going to go over to the ask column and I'm going to click. And it knows it's a stop because that's how I had my mouse selected. And also it's below the market. So a sell, a protective stop to sell is going to be below the market. A protective stop, to, if, you, if I was short, to buy would be above the market. And so now if we get stopped out, then I will be flat again. I'll sell another one, but at a lower price for a loss. And you can see my, my loss right there. Now, this is not a limit order. This is a stop. This is a, basically it's gonna behave as a market order. So once this market touches 44.90, it's gonna liquid, it's gonna trigger this order and this trigger uh, is going to, hey, hey, let's get this guy the best price for his, uh, for his stop loss and uh, get him out of his position. So that's, that's how stops work. Now, to complete the anatomy of the trade, of course, I would like to have a profit target somewhere, right? We didn't get stopped out. We survived it, right? We, we survived it. And one might say, well, if we get up to, I don't know, I'm just making this up, 97, uh, 44, 97, I'd like to get out of this trade and take profit on the trade. I'm going to move again, move over to the X ask column. You got to skip the estimated PL column, but you go over to the ask column and click once, and there's my order. So I have a position, which is highlighted by the green triangle. I have a profit target up here. I have a stop loss down here, and everything is set exactly the way I want it. So it's really that easy. Just click and you're done. It's super fast, super convenient. Now, um, the other uh, thing that's important too, at any point in this process, 
if you decide, um, for instance, you just want to get out of your trade. And not only do you not want to get out of your trade, uh, but you also want your target and your stop loss canceled at the same time. It's like, you know what? I'm out. I'm done. I want to get out. You would simply just click on this exit at market and cancel button. So it exits on a market order and it cancels everything that you have working. I'm going to go ahead and click on this once. And I'm flat, zero position. And all of the orders associated with that are no longer there. They're, they're gone. They're totally gone. Everybody with me so far? Take that as a yes. How are we doing, Ed? Um, let's go. Let's take this to the next level. We're going to do the same trade, except we're going to automate the target and the stop. And I'm going to do that by going down to my little gear here at the bottom, which says ATM. If so you can see this, go all the way to the bottom of my screen, and you could see uh, you could see a word that calls that says ATM, autom automated trade management. I'm going to click on that little gear. It's going to open up another box, and I have some settings here, some ATM settings. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. Now, if I wanted to create a strategy out of this and name it, you can. I'm not going to do that right now, but it's easy to do. You could save it. Um, I want to show, I want my uh, ATM strategy to be set up in ticks. Okay. And my type is going to be a simple bracket to start. This is just a simple, simple bracket. And my target uh, is going to be, it's, it's a target price and a stop loss price. That's what it's telling me. Now I'm going to set my take profit for I don't know. I just again don't follow home, uh, you know, along at home. This is just with real money. This is just uh, I'm in sim mode right now, and I'm just kind of demonstrating process. So once I get in, once I get in my position, I want a profit of say ten ticks, and at the same time I'm willing to risk six ticks. So stop loss is set at tick, and I have my stop loss type uh, set at stop. And we'll change this in a minute, but for now let's keep it simple. Simple bracket. Profit target 10, stop loss 6. And I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go ahead and put an order in. It could be a market order. It could be join the bid. It could be a limit order. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and hit join the bid. And we'll see if we can get it. We got in. So we're long there. Now, look at what happened. My target's already in there. And my stop's already in there. I didn't place that. The system did. The software did. It's smart, right? It, it, it knows that. And you can count. Yeah, we're 10 ticks above. If you're not, you know, there were six ticks below. So that act that acted perfectly. So now my hands are off the mouse, right? I don't have to do anything other than root for my trade to go up 10 ticks. And once it's uh, once we do go up 10 ticks and we get filled up here, if we do get filled up here, then the stop loss will automatically uh, cancel. Alternatively, if we get stopped out first, the profit target will automatically cancel. And you could adjust these if you want. Remember, you just grab it with your mouse and drag it to a different price. It's canceled and replaced the target. The instructions for the uh, ATM are still valid. Now you might, there we go, we got stopped out and you can see the target uh, is gone. You might remember though, so when I say simple bracket, you might've heard the word OCO, order cancels other. And that's just what happened. That one order was filled, it canceled the other. All right, let's do that again on the on the short side. I'll keep the I'll keep the same. You can do this on a long side or the short side. It doesn't matter. I still have. Let's go to my cog just to make sure. I still have ATMs on, right? I still want to do another one. Now remember, this is important. It'll stay on until you turn it off. So if you don't want to do an automated trade, then then turn that off. If you don't want to do a simple bracket, turn that off. I'm going to leave it on, and then we're going to go ahead and just we're going to go. We'll just sell one at the market. And look what happened. My target's 10 ticks deep. My stop is six ticks above my entry. And my carrot is pointing downward. It's red, right? It, I'm short. It's red. We want the market to go down. And everything is just opposite of what it was. My p and is positive now. It's going my way. I could drag my stop if I want to break even, if I wanted to do that, and tighten things up a little bit. Whatever trade management you want to manually do, if you want, you can. And I just kind of did that to kind of speed things up so you can see how the profit target gets canceled right away. So that's that's that trade on the short side of it. Now let's take it one notch above. Let's take it a, let's take it another notch up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, that gear again. And instead of slaps loss being just a regular stop, I wanna see what my other options are. 
I have a stop, a stop limit, a trail. Aha, what's trail? That looks pretty cool. Um, trailing stop, and look at all the options here. We, we, we probably won't go through all of these options today, but let me tell you what they are. There's a trail stop. There's a trail stop limit. There's an auto break even. There's an auto trail. And there's an auto break even plus an auto trail. We're going we're gonna to go to the trail stop. Okay. And by the way, I'd experiment. I would suggest everybody who's interested to go and get a, a free practice account a real-time free practice account, and then uh, go through all of these options and practice them. See how, you know, see what, see if something resonates with you and kind of uh, learn, get muscle memory and how, how, how these different features work. Let's go to trail stop. And I'm going to select that. So what, what I'm telling this to do right now is say, Hey, once I'm in a position as I'm profitable, as the market's going my way, that I want my stop to, to go tick for tick, closer to my break even. Okay. So let's hit it. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it on the, it looks like we're breaking down a little bit. So I'm going to just join the ask and we'll see if we can get short. There's my bracket right there. And of course the market's moving against us. Let's be patient. So my stop is originally placed at 44.93. Remember that that's an important number. And so let's kind of wait to see if we get a little bit more fill up here, a little bit more burst up here. And this is kind of a smart, uh, this is not kind of a smart, it's a very smart simulation because it doesn't give me a fill on a limit order right away because it knows there's an order book. There are orders in front of me. Okay, so that's how that works. So now I'm short one, right? And right here, um, well, we already ticked up one. So we already moved one tick closer because once I got filled, you, it happened so fast you didn't see it but uh, it trailed. Let's set the trail a little bit further apart so that we could see it move a little bit better. I'm gonna go to my gear again and we'll set that at 10 also. So we'll do 10 and 10, right? 10 and 10, 10 for the pro uh, profit target and 10 for the stop loss. And I'm gonna hit save and say, okay. And again, I'm gonna do this from the short side here. We'll be patient here. I'm gonna put a limit order in, um, sorry, uh, in the ask column and just kind of be patient. And again, uh, it shows me where my target is going to be once I get filled. And it shows me where my stop. Now that I'm filled, we're in the game. So as we make a new lower watermark, as this market goes down, the stop will trail tick for tick uh, downward, right? Because I'm short and it's I'm trailing the stop closer to my break even. And again, experiment with the settings. Each market's going to work a little different. If we were doing this in the micro NASDAQ as an example, uh, the micro NASDAQ would, it moves around a lot more. It does, you know, gives that uh, that trail a little bit more of an opportunity. So uh, uh, practice definitely look at the micro NASDAQ uh, stock index futures if you're practicing uh, this behavior. Let's see if we can get a little bit of luck. Let's see if this market can go down a little bit our way, um, so we could uh, see if the watch the trail uh, kind of move down tick for tick as we go. In the meantime. Um, we could see the histogram bars are coming and going. There's, uh, we could see that uh, gr uh, yellow marker telling us where uh, where we're trading at. Um, when the yellow marker matches the highest bid or the highest green column, it means we're trading on the bid. If the uh, orange marker matches the instead, if the orange marker matches the lowest offer or ask the red histogram bar, then we're trading on the offer. So that's what they mean by we're trading in the bid, we're trading on the offer. It's where, where, where transactions are occurring. They can't occur on both because there's that natural separation between bid offer. That's called the bid ask spread. So one of the things, tough parts about doing a live demonstration is the market doesn't move around enough for you to really demonstrate your technique. But we'll kind of we'll kind of hang tight here for a couple more seconds and then we'll toggle to um the uh a NASDAQ, the, uh, the micro NASDAQ. Now I could add a second trading ladder here as well. I could click on this plus side, add module, hit the plus side here. And I could just say, hey, I want a chart. I want a quote board. I want a trading ladder. This is a DOM, depth of market it's called. Um, orders, order window module, positions module, order ticket, tick stream. Think time and sales. That's what that tick stream is. Uh, performance center, spread matrix, all of these things you could add uh, as, a, uh, as, as an option.
So here's our position. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our stop six ticks now. We've advanced far enough for the stop loss to now, instead of being 10 ticks away, is only six ticks away from our entry. Now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So as we make a new low water mark, this moves down. Now you can see it's natural, natural. I'm going to move the target down a little bit further. You can see that there's natural kind of oscillation in the marketplace. So with this technique, a lot of times when you're doing a trailing stop, you'll eventually get stopped out. But, you know, that might be OK, especially if the market goes your way for a long distance. That makes sense. So, again, one, two, three, four, five, six ticks from break even. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have to start trading 97 three quarters and 97.50, which we just did. And now we moved again. We're even tighter now. One, two, three ticks away from break even. And that's kind of how it incrementally kind of inches down, inches down, inches down. Now, I double clicked accidentally for a two. That was my bad, um, which is going to be interesting um, on what happens here. But by, by clicking on it, I double clicked on it. I made it a two instead of a one. You want the, you want the two to match the one. So when two doesn't match one, so you would want it one and one. Um, and again, you have that easy exit, really easy to do. So I'm going to click on that for now. I'm going to cancel everything. And we'll switch, we'll switch to the marketplace here. I'm going to just click on the first top E-mini S&P. And I'm going to change it to MNQ because uh, sometimes it's easier to see. This, gives, this is a smart search. It's kind of like a search engine. You could type in a keyword there. It'll give you results. But I know the ticker symbol to the micro NASDAQ 100 stock index future happens to be MNQ. And I'm going to click on that, and it'll show that particular market as well. So here we are in this particular market, and you can see it's moving around like crazy, right? It moves around really, really, really quickly in this particular marketplace. So we're going to um, go ahead and do the same thing. I want to check for um, my gear, and I'm going to turn ATMs on. It's a new market, right? So it doesn't know it's, it should be turned on. That's not the default. I'm going to turn it on again. And we'll do the same thing, except this time we're going to make the take profit 20. Uh, we'll make the stop loss 20. And we're going to change the uh, uh, the uh, the stop type to a trailer, trailer stop. And let's save and OK. Now, this is going to be moving fast. So, again, I'm going to I'm going to be really patient here. I'm just going to go on the long side randomly. Again, I'm going to click on the bid side. I'm going to put a limit order in. And uh, once we get filled, then my stop is going to be placed. My target is going to be placed. It's going to be bracketed around it. And as the market goes higher, my stop trails up. And you can see it moving up right now. And then, boom, we got a profit target hit, and the stop automatically canceled. So it's easier graphical representation when you're doing a market that moves like this versus a market that maybe is a little bit more range-bound and is not moving as quickly. All right. Well, we covered a lot of ground here. So let's just kind of recap here a little bit. Uh, recap here a little bit. We know how to trade markets on the fly. Um, we know how to expand and contract. Let's go ahead and add a second instance. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to grab that dome and I'm just going to move it. I don't know, put it here. It'll be side by side and I'm going to put a different symbol in there. Let's put crude oil in here as an example. Um, again, I'm just going to type CL because I know that's the contract. We'll double click on the first one. I'll select it. And now I have a crude, crude oil trading ladder side by side. And again, I could move it to the other side of the screen. From a modular point of view, it's very easy to do. You just grab that top tab and drag it to wherever you want it to go. And then it'll place it in a different location. And um, there's a tab feature up here too as well. There's a And here it is. It's squished up here. If I wanted to just make it a tab feature of the existing module, I could do that. I could just place it there as well. It just took it out. So that's how easy that is. And this is, again, the crude oil. Uh, trading ladder. So it's, it's really as easy as that. Um, and I could open this up a little bit more to show you the full, uh, the full layout that I have presented right here. All right. Well, so we covered a lot of ground. We learned how to launch this. We learned how to control the settings. We learned how to expand it. We learned how to place simple order entry. We learned how to do a simple bracket. And then we learned how to do a simple bracket with a trail. And again, on the ATM features here, you could experiment with some of these break-evens as well because they're pretty handy as well. Um, let's just turn this on. Uh, this is in crude, though. Let's change. Let's go back to the NASI. I'm going to leave it in this view right here. I'm going to click on my tab there. I'm going to go back to that little uh, the gear. 
click on the gear ATM settings. And in this case, I'm going to drop down this stop, this trail and say, hey, I want to auto break even. Now this moves so quickly, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, see, but I don't want to auto break even until I get, I don't know, let's say eight, eight ticks in. Until we get eight ticks to our profit, then I want it to break even. I want it to jump, basically, is what I'm saying. Auto break even is a jump. I'll hit save and okay. We'll scroll down. I'll put a limit order in and we'll, there we go. Now we have to get eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have to bounce up here. So if you see a 190 print, then it'll jump up. You'll see the stop break up to my carrot right there, which is at 187.75. Uh, of course, since this is a live demonstration, we're going to have to do this several times until we find this happen. Again, I'm long again, uh, and we have our profit target there. And there we go. We just jumped up. Uh, the stop just jumped up the break even. You guys could see that. It happened super fast, but this is the nature. And it's an OCL. So again, once that stop is hit, the uh, profit target automatically cancels. All right. So again, I recommend getting a practice account. If you don't know, if you want directions on how to do that, shoot out a note to Ed really quickly. He's in the chat right now, and he would be uh, happy to um, get you situated, get you started, if 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 you will, uh, to go ahead and get involved with the web base. It's pretty. It's it's. Look at the data. So a lot of folks are saying, well, the web based data doesn't work as well, and you know, historically, not with respect to Ninja Trader, but historically, you hear these kind of uh, arguments. Well, that's not, that, I mean, clearly, look at this data. I mean, this is not. This is nothing to, this is uh, nothing to laugh about. I mean, it's moving, you know, data streams these days are measured in milliseconds. It's really, really a robust piece of software that we have here uh, with the Ninja Trader web. So I recommend everybody taking a peek. All right. Well, having said all that, folks, uh, appreciate your time today. Next week, we're going to take a look at the mobile app. We're going to be showing the mobile app and some tricks to, to navigate through the mobile app. But, you know, you're looking at it on a smaller screen. And um, it's, it's, uh, it, it operates a little differently, but it's also super cool. And that's the third way you could trade uh, with, the Ninja, with one of the NinjaTrader trading platforms, the PC-based, the web-based, which we just covered today. And then finally, lastly, but not leastly, the mobile next Monday. Um, having said all that, also today, this afternoon at 3.15, we do have Tom Schneider is going to be live at bars closing, 3.15 East Coast time. Appreciate everybody coming. Uh, in the meantime, please be safe out there. Be good to each other. Thanks.